Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We honor you. We praise you. Father, we love you. God, we love you in this house. We love you as a people. We love you as a church. We love you as a bride. God, we love you as a Savior. Father, we love you uh, as the sacrifice that, that you laid yourself down for us so that we may live for you. We love you. We honor you. And we thank you, God. Father, I pray that, Father, I commission as what I pray to every single one of us tonight, God, that we, uh, our lives would be, Father, living sacrifice, uh, holy and acceptable, Father, uh, and pleasing unto you, Father, that all of us, all over this house, God, that we would be a bride, God, that so hunger, so desire, Father, to be, Father, at your feet, a, a bride, God, that so desires to be, uh, God, in your very presence, every moment, every every second of our very, uh, every day, God, every every uh, uh, every season of our life, God, every day, every second, every moment, every minute, God, every hour, uh, every month, God, every week, every 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 part of our every part of our day, every part of our time, God, everything that we are, that we would be people, God, that everything about us just oozes the love of Jesus. It just bleeds uh, the cry uh, of love towards you, God. We we just thank you, Father, uh, for that. We thank you, Father. For everybody here tonight, God, that, that has said within their heart that I, I'm not living on, on, on the fence. I'm either hot or I'm cold, but I would rather be hot for my Savior. I thank you, God, that every single one of us here tonight, God, every one of us, God, has said within our own hearts that we, Father, want to live to the best of our ability to love and, and to cherish and to just live for Jesus. That every single one of us, God, ha has said it within our own hearts that we, Father, w would want to just, everything about us uh, says that, you know what, we're a born-again Christian. That people from all over can just look at us. We ain't even got to open our mouth. They just look at us and say, something's different about that person. Father, we ain't got to give a list of qualifications. We ain't got to give a list of uh, what we've done, what we haven't done. But, Father, that our life within itself, the fruit of our life, God, would just speak for itself. That when people would look at us, God, our fruit would speak for itself, God, whether that be good or bad fruit, God, but we want to be people that has fruit of the Spirit, Father, not fruit of the flesh. And God, we just thank you. And God, we just love you. And God, we just honor you in this house. Father, we just love you. And Father, I pray that you would anoint me for such a time as this. Speak through me, God. Forgive me, Father, for, for, for not being able to study the way that I want to. Uh, Lord, no, no excuses, Father, that we would just be better, do better. And, and Father, I pray, God, that you anoint their ears tonight, God, to be able to receive here exactly what it is your Spirit saying to the church, God. Give us a revelation of your blood. Give us a revelation of the healing that comes from your blood. Give us revelation, Father, of what it means for us. And God, let us not take it lightly, uh, just like they sung tonight, the Savior's precious blood. Let us not take it lightly, God. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And I thank you, God. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. And we love you, God. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. I just want to say I thank everybody for your, your faithfulness to come early and pray and to press into the service. I know it's tough sometimes, but we have to do these things. We have to press. We have to pray. And I'm going to just say it. We just cannot show up and spend all of our time outside. It just won't work. We have to be a people that that pray. And I'll be the bad guy. I'll, I'll, I'll say it. And, uh, we cannot. If we do want true revival, we have to get serious about prayer. We have to get serious about services. We have to get serious about God's word. We have to get serious about what God has for us. Because he's entrusted us with something so great. And if we mishandle it, I'm telling you, he'll give it to somebody else. Amen. If we don't handle it the correct way and we just get in a routine uh, of the same old thing every single, every single service, it will not work. And, and, and it hurts my heart. It hurts. It, it does. It, it grieves me. It grieves the spirit on the inside of me. Uh, when when the altar is empty, 
it grieves the Holy Spirit on the inside of me when he cries out for for discipline. He cries out for prayer. He cries out for pushing, pressing, because something great is about to happen. Uh, and, and we take advantage of God's grace over and over. Uh, so that that's the heart, the, the cry of my heart, that we were commissioned to do better. We're Cliff that we just want to be better. We want to we want to thrive. We want to excel in what God has for us. We want people to get drawn to this house. But people will not get drawn unless we, we are at a place of prayer. It will not happen. Amen. It will not happen. Uh, and I only say all of that because it is for the edifying of the body. Yeah. But, and I will be the bad guy. It's, it's okay. <laughs> we have to get to the place that, that God, when I'm here, I'm cutting everything else off. I'm here to worship you. I'm here to press. I'm here to pray. I'm here to love on each other. But when, but when it's time to get down to business, it's time to get down to business. And I'll be found doing what you've called us to do, God. And, and that's my prayer for all of us, that we, we are found doing what God has for us. Because there's somebody, Amelia, that's broken, that's going to say, I, 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 I needed somebody to be in that position, into that place, in their place. But when I was there, there wasn't nowhere to be found. I was hurting, but when I went to go to, they wasn't there. Uh, and, and it grieves the spirit. Now, it, I can say it grieves Corey. It upsets me, but I'm saying it grieves the spirit yeah. because it comes to the place that we have to understand uh, that very much so, don't forget that God's ways is above our ways. God's thoughts is above our thoughts. Uh, his way of love is above our way. But what we do not understand also, sometimes we forget, is when the scripture keeps says that we grieve his spirit, his way of grieving uh, is way far greater than our way of grieving. And we can't even come to the thought of how much uh, we grieve his spirit when we when we fall short or come short of what he would have for us. Uh, and, and that is in the place of prayer. That definitely, most definitely, number one in God's house is the place of prayer setting the tone setting, and we said every service but we have to say it until we we break out of that to set the tone set the pace set the because somebody's going to come needing uh needing that uh, needing that breakthrough amen needing that breakthrough romans chapter 12 the bible says i beseech you uh therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind. What does that look like? That's a question. Boom. What's that look like? <laughs> that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'll read it one more time. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of whose mind? Your mind. Not the pastor's mind, not the worship team's mind, your mind. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I can't get in God's will I can't get in God's perfect will. It's, the Bible just said you should be able to. Get in the perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according uh, as God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members uh, having not have not the same office so we being many are one body in christ and every one uh, members of members one of another having then gifts differing according to the grace that has been given to us whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the portion proportion of the faith of faith or ministry let us wait on our ministry or that he has, or he that teaches on teaching. And, and what that's saying, because I'm not going to spend a lot of time there, but what that's saying is 
whatever the gift or the, the grace that God's given you for whatever gift is on your life, do it uh, to the proportion of faith that God's given you. So if God's given you the, uh, 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 whether it be prophecy, let us prophesy to the portion of faith. If it's ministry, let us wait on our ministry or he that teacheth, on, wait on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on the exhortation that he giveth, let him do it with simplicity. And he that ruleth with diligence, let him sow, soweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love uh, be without dis... How you say that word? Dissimulation. Uh, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Does this make sense so far? Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. Romans 12 and 11. Not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. Now, don't think I'm breaking this up on purpose. This is a lot to read it real quickly all at once. So I'm breaking it up this way. Amen. Amen. Distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. That was simple, good teaching, ain't it? Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condense, condescend, thank you, to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conscience. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place, but rather give place under wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay Says the, says, the, says the Lord, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemies, if, if thine enemy hunger, what do you do? Amen. You feed him. If he thirsts, what do you do? Amen. You give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome evil, but what? Overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with with good. Amen. That's so that's so much that Paul said. So much. Oh, but it's so good. It's so good. What did we start reading at? Twelve? Yeah. Amen. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the by the mercies of God. Not by the mercies of your pastor. Not by the, the mercies of your husband, not the mercies of your wife. But I beseech you by the mercies of, of God. This is what Paul said. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So there's a way about it, Boomer, that, that we can renew our mind biblically. That we're not conformed to this world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Every single day that Cliff, we, I believe daily, we need to get in a habit. And so often, immediately, we don't. I, I don't. We, we don't. As the, We need to do better. But we need to get in a habit that we wake up every single day. Uh, it's not that you have to pray on the armor of God. But you remind yourself that you have the armor of God on. Also, you need to remind yourself, just like this scripture, that I'm renewed by the transforming, uh, that you be transformed by the renewing of my mind. That I, this day, may be able to prove what is good, 
what is acceptable and what is the perfect will of God for my life. Because oftentimes life itself is so much in our mind. It's so it's so pressurized uh, upon us that we go to bed wore out, we wake up wore out. We work all day and we get wore out. We come to church, we're wore out. Didn't even get to take a shower. We're wore out, we're, we're busy people. And because of our, our mind never shut. You know, most nights, and I'll just, I need to do better. Most nights I have to lay there for I don't know how long because my mind will not shut down. My body is done, but my mind just won't shut up. It just won't quit. It just, it just, it, uh, so much, so much pressure, so much things that it's a lot. And, and though my body is done, my body is like, okay, I am dizzy, headache behind my eyeballs because I'm so sleepy. I'm done. But I lay there and my mind just won't stop. So I wake up and, and Teresa, if I'm not careful, I'm automatically tired because of the day before. What happened the day before? And the thoughts of the day before. I think that's why the writer said, don't even take thought of tomorrow, for tomorrow will have problems within itself. Uh, and, and don't even worry about tomorrow. Focus on today. For the grace is sufficient enough for tomorrow when tomorrow comes. So if the grace is sufficient enough for tomorrow, why do we wake up tomorrow already tired for when tomorrow comes, we're done before tomorrow even starts? So Paul said that you, you're not conformed to this world, to the problems of the world. To the tasks at hand, to, to, to the church, to the people, to the problems of the people, to the building, to, to the house, to the church, to the widow home, to the land, to, to people's problems, to my husband's problems, to my wife's problems, to my cousin's problems, uh, my neighbor's problems, my friend's problems, all of these problems. He said, don't be conformed to, the, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now we're mature enough to know of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 that we have the warfare of that scripture that we can t tap into that. I want to give you a small renewing, not renewing, a small refreshing of the lesson of the seven times Jesus' blood was dripped or presented for us. One of the times was when the crown got presented uh, of thorns and the thorns being the curse of thing. He took the curse on us, broke the curse off of our life, over our mind. The blood of Jesus was presented from his head, from our mind, that we can present the blood over our mind battles. Y'all still with me? So that, that was presented. So Second Corinthians chapter 10. Now I'm just going off the hip. Y'all just bear with me because I ain't got no notes again. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. But but uh, but because of that, the blood was presented and we that wrote Second Corinthians chapter 10. The writer, because of that, was able to write Second Corinthians chapter 10. Now that we can say, you know what? Uh, though I live in the flesh, I do not war with the flesh. So the weapon of my warfare, it's not carnal minded, but it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strong coats, casting down every imagination, every thought process to the obedience of Christ. So, so every thought that I have, I have the ability, if I would ever learn, now listen to me, saints of God, to get and tap in to that place of prayer. If I would ever learn to tap in to that place, but this is the issue. We, we go day by day, a normal person, not a normal Christ-believing follower, not a normal uh, saint of God, not a normal Bible-believing, devil-stomping, Pentecostal faith-believing, not that person, but a normal human life. Every day, we, we day by day, we live the human side of it and not the authority side of it. We live the human side of it and expect the results of the, 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 the authority side of it. We live the human lifestyle. Day, we wake up, we work, we go home, we eat, we feed the animals, we we, we, we spend five minutes with the kids. Uh, if you have animals, I just got old dog. I just like it. <laughs> anyway, we can preach right there, couldn't we? But we we this or we get up. Let's say it this way: We'll get up in the mornings. We'll turn on our TV, though it might even be preaching. We'll turn our TV on. Whether it's, it might be westerns, it might be Netflix movies all day. I get caught up. I like to down wine. Kenny, one way I like to down wine, I'll get on Netflix. My wife will tell you. And I can spend, if I'm not careful, I can spend six hours watching movies Amen. just to get away. You give me the, here we go, I'll tell myself. You, you give me them Marvel movies, I tell you right now, I can watch the beginning of Thor to the end of uh uh, uh, what is it? Avengers? I can watch every single one of them, and each of them is like three hours long. I can watch them all. 
I just like it. But that's the day-to-day -day human stuff. Amen. I can sit down, boomer, and watch Hunting Channel and watch deer and watch big bucks come through, and I just, oh, I love it. And if I'm not careful, I'll, I'll do that all day long. Amen. If I'm not careful, I'll lay on the couch with my feet propped up on Facebook, scrolling all day long. If we're not careful, we'll be on that, that hell phone all day long, gossiping to our neighbor all day long. Uh, just it's normal routine for the human nature that we that we have. Uh, if we're not careful, let me just throw that in here. If we're not careful, we'll treat church services like we ain't got a big part in the church services. And we'll have the, not the, the authority side of it, but the, the, the normal human side of it. That I'll just come to church with the, and it just flew out of my heart while we was praying. Uh, we'll come with the expectation that somebody else's horn of oil is going to be filled up. That I don't have to have my horn full to pour out. I expect that Samuel to come through and pour it on me. We don't show up with the, the, the readiness to pour out to somebody else. So we don't have the authority side of it. We just have the human side of it. But Paul said, he said, I, I, I'm not transformed, uh, but, but, but be me transformed by the renewing of my mind. So that I, I teach myself. And it all comes to the place of prayer. We know we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So how do we wrestle? <laughs> it's simple stuff. We know this. We're not dumb. We know this. We know what Ephesians says. We know how to fight. We, we, we're a house that we, by now, Though we do it or though we don't do it, that's another. But we know, but we're how to fight. It's most of the babies in this house that, that sometimes sold out and won't listen, they know how to fight for the most part. You teach them. They know that we're supposed to pray. They know that we lay hands on people. They know what the oil means. They know that when we go to pray, most of the time we'll crack the oil open and we'll pray. They know. We've been trained. But we don't go through the authority side. We go through the human side. That we can't give God three hours. We got to keep leaving outside of service. We got to go outside and um, just uh, go outside and smoke. We got to go out into the kitchen and, and, and drink our energy, energy drink or Mountain Dew. I got to sneak to my office. I got to drink. And I, uh, but because we're not walking in the authority side of it, but it's the normal human side of it. So we present ourselves like we're nothing to the whole body. We come presenting ourselves like we ain't got a position, a role, or the authority side of it. Like we ain't got, what I'm trying to say is we show up like we don't have say so how the service goes. Or we'll show up like what we do don't affect the service. When in fact, we're teaching that the entire body, the entire membership, the entire house here is going to be leaders one day for the overflow of the people that's coming. So to be that, we have to, we, Cliff, we have to now exercise that. That now, though I might not feel like a leader, but now I need to exercise and walk in the authority that I am a leader. I have a role. I have a, a duty. I have a purpose. I have a job at, upon the Rock Ministries that I come. I pour down heaven. I invite the Spirit in. I, me, me, Kenny, you, Cliff, you, Stacy, you, Darlene, you, all of us. We we have the, the ability to pour down heaven ourselves. Amen. Amen. So we don't walk in the authority. And this is what Paul's saying. That I'm not conformed by this word, but I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. That I may prove what is good, what is acceptable, and what is the perfect will of God for my life. I'm telling I'm here to tell you now. It's God's perfect will that when sinners come off of the street or somebody that's battling, should I backslide? Should I not? Should I even go to church? Should I not? When they come in. It's God's perfect will that the atmosphere is set, that chains be broke, that yokes be broken off. And the yokes don't break by me just talking. The yokes don't break by just you guys singing and playing. Yokes does not break just by us coming and praying for 30 seconds and going back outside. Yokes will not break that way. I promise they will not break that way. Yokes break. How does the yokes break? Anybody know? Biblically. Praying. How else? Oh, it's Bible. What breaks yokes? The anointing destroys the yokes. It's the anointing. So if we come in, listen, if we come in and it's bound up for me, we don't feel the presence. We don't, it's like, my God, why, it, it's so tight in here. That means the anointing is not flowing yet. That means yokes cannot break yet. I don't care how loud the singing is, the preaching is. I don't, I don't matter. 
We want it to, but it don't matter in the spirit realm. What matters in the spirit realm is if the anointing is flowing, if the anointing is moving, if the anointing is on the songs, the drums, the guitar, the bass, the singers, the, the message, if the anointing is presented, that's when the, the yoke breaks. Amen. Amen. So we want the healing. We want the deliverance. We want the set free. We want the, the revival uh, filling atmosphere. We got a work to do. Amen. We have to work. Boomer, you can't wake up and renew your mind for me. Boomer cannot get up in the morning, see his knees. He can pray for me. But it's up to me whether or not I want to renew my mind and walk in freedom every day. Boomer can cover me in prayer. I'm just using him because he's got the bullet. Boomer can cover me every day in prayer. Boomer can fall on his face clear fast for me. Yes, I'll feel the effect of it because he's covering me in prayer. Don't stop. It works. But at the same time, if I'm not doing it myself, and, and I'll, 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 let me just tell you, tell myself, I tell I know this. I remember one season of my life many years ago, uh, I, I was dabbling in stuff, uh, and, and uh, I'll just tell you, I was dabbling in pornography. This was many years ago, and I messaged the man of God. Uh, you guys don't even know him. Uh, he's a black friend, anyways. He's away from here. No, anyways. Uh, he, he, he's a good guy. Uh, anyways, I, I messaged him. Uh, he's actually way away from here. Uh, not, not not even close. But I messaged him. I was like, "Hey, man," I said. I said, "Can can you pray for me?" And if, if God's telling you something, you know, he said, "Yes, man, I, I'll pray for you." He said, uh, "I'll start fasting now." And I'm like, "My God!" And you know what I done? Remember why he fasted and prayed for me? Continue. Continue to pour it up. Continue to do my, my stuff. Continue to not pray. Continue not read. Continue not to fast. Continue to just do my same lifestyle. You know what the man of God told me in three days? He says, this is what God told me to tell you. That that how's it? I can't quote the scripture. It's been so long since I read it. He says, when your eyes dark, your whole body uh, is full of sin. Or when your eyes see, looks how is that? When your eye look at sin, your whole body is full of darkness. When your eye uh, uh, how, how is that? Looks at light. Your whole body's full of light. He said, and I, I chopped it to pieces, but it's in the Gospels. And he said, this is what God said. He said, the stuff that you're looking at on the computer is making your whole body full of darkness. He said, you stop looking at that and make your eye full of light, your whole body be full of light. But what you're allowing through your eyes is making the whole part of you darkness. This is why you feel the heaviness. And, and at the same time, I was just doing the same old routine. But God was telling on me. God was revealing to edify, to heal, to lift me, to, to, to fix it, not to just, no, no, to fix it. Uh, so, so he spent time in prayer to help me. But we have an obligation, remember, to ourselves to wake up, renew my mind, renew my thoughts, renew my hatred, renew my anger, re renew my jealousy. Uh, not renew it, but renew the thought pattern to get away from that stuff. I wake up with a jealous thought, and I got to renew my mind to get out of that. I wake up angry at my brother. I got to renew my mind to get out of that. I wake up with, with envy, strife, uh, backbiting, whatever it may be. I have to renew my mind to get out of it. So we want healing in the body. We want healing in the mind. We want healing in the solar realm. The mind, the will, and the emotion. That's the solar realm. The mind is a big part in our solar realm. We talk about deliverance, but we, we're still, you know, people still studying them. But for true deliverance, it's mind, will, and emotion. Your solar realm. Your mind has to be renewed. Your soul, your your will, your emotions, all of that in Thessalonians, all of that three-part being in your body has to be renewed. So we want healing. We want deliverance. We want freedom. All of this that we want, we have to remember. That's why I told them to sing the song. Just keep singing it. Because we cannot forget to present the Word of God. We can't for, uh, forget to present the blood of Jesus. Because if we forget these two things, we'll never be free. If we forget to present these two things, we'll never have freedom within ourselves, within our mind. We'll never be healed. Amen. Amen. We'll never be healed. I want to read something to you. It's pretty, I, I think it's neat. But we'll never be healed. We want healing in our body. Uh, we want healing in the service. We want healing. That's good. We want healing in our services. We want our services to be on fire. We want our services, that, that revival atmosphere. But revival will never happen until revival happens here. So as long as we're dead here and walking and not in the authority, but the human side here, bless you, the, the human side here will never experience the authority side of revival 
uh, here the way that God has us. Amen. But we, we want healing. Now, I want to read something to you. Uh, some, some notes real quick. The scourging of Christ for our healing. The scourging of Christ for our healing. Now, if you remember the scriptures that we read uh, about the, the drops of blood, we, we y'all remember that we, we talked about every time Jesus bled, it was for something. Yeah. Every time he bled, because the word of God says that the, the voice, the, the, the life is in the blood. So that every time Jesus bled, we, we taught that God himself spoke. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, so he, he spoke every time Jesus bled. So we know there's healing in the blood of Jesus. There, there's power within the blood of Jesus alone. That if we just live a life, we don't have to. It's good to have all these studies, but when we have uh, the the humility uh, of the, the love of God, the, the humbleness, the, the purity of just seeking the Lord, when we have all of this and we present the blood of Jesus, stuff happens just by knowing the blood of Jesus and what it can do, the doctrine of the blood. I want to read this to you, and I'm still talking about uh, in Romans with the mind, and we'll go back there. A scourging was a beating at the hands of the Roman soldiers with a short-handed whip. According to the history, the Romans could scourge a victim with an unlimited number of strokes. But the law of Moses, however, uh, limited the blows to 40 stripes. Uh, 40 stripes he must, he may give him and not exceed, exceed lest he should exceed and beat him uh, above these many stripes, then thy brother shall seem vile unto thee. That's Deuteronomy 25 and 3. Uh, the, in Roman times, scourging a Jewish person with 39 stripes was common. Now you remember Paul wrote of the Jews five times received thy 40 stripes, save one. 2 Corinthians 11 24. Paul said that. He said 40 stripes minus one. 39 stripes. Uh, five times I received that. Amen. I'm going to just say it. Paul, a man of God that we so long look after, said, I got beat 40 times minus one, five times. Kenny, if somebody looks at us wrong, as a man of God or a woman of God, we puff up. We lock up. We won't even come to church for weeks. Paul said, they stole me five times. Or they, they not stole me, I'm sorry. Uh, they whipped me five times. Five different times. 49 stripes each time. And Paul still wrote, if I go back to Jerusalem, I know they'll stole me. But he said, even if they stole me, I'll still serve God. Right. Though they stole me, though they slay me, yet I'll serve him. And, and, and this is the problem. It is we want the results of the apostles back then. But the, the study says this manner of punishment developed from the belief that a person receiving more than 39 stripes might die from the punishment. They believed you can, mama, they believed, the Romans believed they can whip you 39 times. But if they whipped you 40 times, it'd probably kill you. So they would push it as far as they could push it to the edge of death. But they wouldn't kill you because they wanted you to suffer. Amen. And the purpose of the beating was not to induce death, but to punish an offender uh, for a high crime. There was another reason for limited scourging to the 39 blows. The whip usually had three uh, thongs, which were struck 13 times for a total of 39 stripes. The fact that it was usually to inflict only 39 lashes, lashes is, is apparent uh, from Joe uh, Hephas, and it talks about another study. But I want to I want to just read something real quick, and it, it'll just open your eyes uh, about this. It'll open your eyes about the blood of Jesus, the healing of Jesus for you. Don't ever think that the Romans just tied you to a post and just automatically started whipping the far out of you. And if it hits your big toe, so be it. If it hits your pinky finger so bit. No, they were so so uh, strategic in what they would do. They were so uh, precise in their whipping. 
Amen. They were so precise in the way they done it. They, they didn't just do it, but they, they done it as a sport. But they was professional. This was their job. They was professional with almost killing somebody but not killing them. They was professional in the way that they would put the crown of thorns on Jesus' head, smack him in the head, make the blood come out. They was professional in the way that they would tie him up, beat him. They was professional uh, when they put his hands to the cross, put the and his feet. They was professional when that last guy put the blow of the spear in his side. They was professional in what they done. Amen. Amen. They was trained for such a purpose. That if they wasn't so professional, Grandma, if they just done it anyway, he would have reached up with the sword, cut his throat, and went on. No, that was professional. Why do you think the Word of God says that uh, that they come to the, the thieves on the cross, the first two that were still alive, so they would break their kneecaps, so that the weight would come down, and they would suffocate themselves. They was professional in what they done. But then when they come to Jesus, he was already dead. So it was written in the scriptures that no broken bone would be upon his body. So that the, I felt God's spirit with that. So that the Roman soldier come up and, and they said, you know what, he's already dead. Don't break his kneecaps to suffocate. So I'll take the spear. They was, they was precise in what they done. Yeah. Let me tell you how, how precise God is, though, with this. Amen. The two hands of the criminals were bound to a post. And then the servant of the synagogue either pulls or tears off his clothes until he leaves his breast and his shoulders bare. A stone or a block is placed behind him on which the servants would stand. And he holds in his hands a scourge uh, made of leather divided into four tails. He who scourge lays one third of the criminal's breast, uh, another third of his right shoulder, and another third of his left shoulder. And a man who receives this punishment is neither sitting nor standing, but all the while stooping. And the man smites with all of his strength with one hand. Very precise in what they do. But notice this. There was three areas in the body where the stripes are more. I hope you enjoy this. One third on the left shoulder. The other third on the right shoulder. And the final third on the breast of the victim. So when they would tie them to the, to the whipping post, the person behind, I know we've seen movies and illustrations that they would get back and they'd just haul up and up. They would, the studies read that they would get up on a, a stone or a block and get up above him. And they would literally scoop the victim over onto something. And they would present that piece of their body at the time that it was time for them to be with. Amen. This would indicate that Christ was struck 13 times on his left shoulder. 13 times on his right shoulder. And 13 times on his breast. This is interesting because if you remember the blood of the lamb in Egypt was smeared in three locations on the doorpost. One on the left side, one on the right side, and one on the upper center mantle of the doorpost. The stripes on Christ was laid near the, near the top of his body, just as the blood of Egypt was on the upper doorpost. And at the weeping post, Jesus bore the sickness of humankind. And these wounds and these stripes are pictured in the actual Jewish Passover bread. It, it, start, it starts talking about the bread called the matzo and how the bread is cut and when it was baked, how it would be presented as stripes on the bread. We ain't got to go into all that. But what I want to go into is how the blood was presented, Kenny, upon Jesus' body, just like the sacrificial lamb. When, when God told him he said sacrifice the lamb, take the blood of the lamb, put it on the doorpost, one on the left side, blood on the right side, blood over over top of it. And so that and no blood on the door on the on the threshing floor, so that the blood is never trampled upon. So you never trample on the blood of the lamb. But when you walk in, you got the covering, and you got the covering, and you got the covering over you. Just like Jesus, when he was scooped over onto that 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 stone, and they would tie him up. 
they would beat him. They would take the, the, the cat of nine tails 13 times on the left side, 13 times on the right side, 13 times on the top side. So that that equals the 30 to 40 minus 1, 39, 13, 13, 13, 39 stripes that they would whip Jesus in representation in, in a type and a shadow of the, the blood of the Lamb that was presented when the death angel would come by. He said the death angel would come, but when he would see the blood presented, he would pass over the house. Won't even go into the house because the blood is presented. Do you not know that the blood is presented over the bride of Christ? As soon as we give our heart to God, that 13 stripes, 13 stripes, 13 stripes over us, we literally get put in just like it. Oh, can, Cliff, can you stand in the door frame, please? Just real quick. I uh, know, I'm sorry. Run, Cliff. <laughs> I'm getting there. He's like, ugh. So you see Cliff standing in the doorpost. You never see the blood presented under his feet because you never trample on the blood of Jesus. But when, as soon as you give your heart to God, please hear me, saints of God. So God just didn't save you and set you out there high and dry for you to die and, and nothing to cover you and the enemy's just going to keep attacking you and you have no help, no defense. No, 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 that's not true. If you could see the picture and, and the shadow of Christ's blood over us, that when he went to the weeper post, I just read it, when he went to the weeper post, the scourging of his blood, just like Cliff in that door frame, touched the left post. He gets saved, he got blood on the left, touch the right post. Get saved, he got blood on the right. And above his head, blood all over him, dripping down on him. So everything around him right now, everything around him is shadowed by the blood of Jesus. Sickness comes, the blood of Jesus is there. Illness comes, the blood of Jesus is there. Uh, you can sit down. Thought processes, the blood of Jesus is there. As soon as I get saved, I will, oh, thank you, Father. Why do you think Jesus said, I am the doorway. I am the door to the sheep, uh, to the foe. That you go any other way, the same as a thief and a robber. He said, but I am the door uh, to the foe. He said, you go any other way, you're the same as a thief and a robber. Amen. He said, I am the door. So as soon as we give our life to God, literally, he opens the door. We walk through him. It's not that we're just walking through a door. No, no. We literally cover ourselves. With the precious blood of the Lamb. That's why I got them keep singing that song. That we need to be reminded of the doctrine of the blood of Jesus. That as soon as we give our heart to God, we walk under that, that covering. As soon as I give my heart to God, as soon as I say, cover me by the blood, wash me clean. I'm literally going through that, that door post, that door, what's that called? The door frame, thank you in my mind. We literally walking through the door frame. As soon as we get, we walking through under the blood. The blood just comes down on us. Amen. Amen. 13, 13, 13, 39 stripes for our healing. I want to give you just a little nugget. And I gave it to some people on the front porch a couple of nights, a couple months ago. Do you know that the the outer court, the inner court, the holy of holies that we've been talking about a little bit? Do you know that uh, that? With that, that was presented in case you'd have the, the, the whole tabernacle, the whole tent, and then on the inside you'd have a, y'all have seen the pictures, right? Y'all yeah. know how it works. Did you know that some studies say that that's called the first door that you come to is called the way into, and the next door that you come into is called the, the truth, and that when you go through the curtain to go into the Holy of Holies, that's called the light. Why do you think that Jesus said that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life? That who would come to the Father cannot come any other way except by and through me. Because I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So he said, uh, <laughs> this is, I, I told him the other night, so I'll just go ahead and tell you. Uh, if you study that out, some studies say that the way that the, they would set the tabernacle, the way they would set the Ark of the Covenant, they would set it uh, from east to west. Behind the ark was west side. On this side was east. Uh, and if you look at the ark, you would say, what is that? Yeah, I'm thinking never ever smoke weed. How would you that in school? So you got the left side is north, never. In front of us is east. Uh, the right side is south. And behind of us is east, west. Okay, let me do this again. They taught us that in school. Never ever smoke weed. North, east, south, west. And it's stuck. <laughs> so if you're looking at the Ark of the Covenant, studies say behind the Ark is east. Behind you is west. 
this side south, that side's north. That's the picture that it has. So that when Jesus literally said that, hey, I, and it's reading the, the gospel, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. That's what Jesus said. I'm the door. I'm the way. Okay? Also, the studies say that that's the reason Jesus said that when you ask for me for forgiveness, I'll cast your sin as far as the east is to the west and to the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered. Because the high priest then will take the sin of the people from the east gate in to, to the, through the, the way, the truth, and the life gate all the way in to the most holy place, present the sins of all the nations into the Ark of the Covenant, make a sacrifice, the smoke would go up, God would forgive everybody of their sins. So Jesus, when he came, he presented his blood. And he said, no longer do you have to go in through the high priest, through all these gates. He said, no, but now I, through me, through my name, through me, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. I'll cast your sin as far as the east gate, all the way through the west gate, never to be remembered. He said, if you present my blood through me. And I said, you guys missed a good shouting opportunity. It's okay. You, Kayla, Kayla shout, thank you, Kayla. Some of us is kind of smiling, others is like, it's okay. Please get that, though. That Jesus, when he presented his blood, not just for our mind, not just for the physical healing, not just for the, phys uh, the healing of our soulless realm, but he presented his blood for everything. Everything that we need. Everything that... Oh, I want to do a study with this. It's good. When you, we ain't got time. But when you go into the Holy of Holies and the Ark of the Covenant, all of that stuff, what's presented there, the, the types and shadows, the, the bread, the, the iron draw that budded, that presents, that represents the, the, the Holy Spirit, the, the 12 spiritual gifts, or the nine spiritual gifts, and, and then you got the law that's, in, oh, it's all good stuff. But Jesus said, you do all, and I'll just wrap it up with this because it's what it talks about. And then one day, hopefully, we're able to go into a study with it because it's good, good teaching. But Jesus said that, present my blood, you're able to come through. Present my blood, you're able to come through. So the scourging of Christ for our healing. The scourging of Christ uh, for our, our healing. So you be transformed by the knowing of your mind. That you may uh, prove what is good, what is acceptable, what's the perfect will of God for your life. I'm here to tell you, we sugarcoat things, we make excuses for things, we say it might not be God's timing, we, we say all these things. I'm just here to tell you what the gospel said. It is not God's will for none of us to be sick. It's not God's will for none of us to be in bondage the way that the bride of Christ is walking in bondage. Amen. So the question comes to your mind, why am I sick then? Why? Why am I in bondage? Why doesn't my shadow heal people when I walk by? Amen. Why? why? If, if everything you're saying is biblical, and it is, why is it that when I go to the doorpost from salvation and the blood gets on me and I'm still... What, what's going on? It's questions, right? Mm -hmm. Why am I still experiencing the hell that I'm experiencing? If everything you're saying is biblical, what if, what's, why, does the blood not work for me? Can I not get free? Does God not love me? Right? So to walk, you remember what the word said? Submit to God. Resist the devil. And then he will then. We halfway quote. We halfway believe. We halfway know. Well, the word of God says that the devil's going to flee from me. It don't say that. Nowhere in your word does it say that the devil's going to flee from you. Nowhere. But it does say that once you submit yourself, therefore, to God, then you resist the devil. What are you resisting? <laughs> you gotta re you got to submit to God your entire being. Everything we just read. Where's that at? We just read it. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So everything that I am, I submit everything to God. My thoughts, my, my actions, my, my lifestyle, everything to God. I, I submit to God, then I resist that, that lifestyle. Then he'll flee from me. You remember, and I, I'm about to close because I, I, I see people sleeping. 
you remember the lie that when Jesus and the devil was disputing and, and the devil come at him three different times? What did Jesus do? He resisted him. At any time that he could have fell into that stuff. And that's why I don't understand about snake handlers. And I'm just saying, I love them with all my heart. They're saved. But we just like Jesus told the enemy, you don't tempt the Lord. You resist him. And then he'll flee. Jesus resists. He said, don't tempt thy Lord thy God. Then he said, get thee behind me, Satan. And the Bible said the devil left for a season. So I submit to God. Submit my will unto God's will. And through God's will, uh, I will live for him. Right? So I submit to God. Resist the enemy and his thought processes for my life. The temptation for my life. Then the enemy will flee. So how am I sick? This is a very beautiful time to self-evaluate your Evaluate yourself. Self evaluate. This is a time to say, you know what, Kenny? Sit down. What am I doing wrong that's not lined up with God's word? What am I doing that's not lined up with his commandments? What unforgiveness do I have in my heart? That's a big one. What what issue do I have with somebody? What jealousy? What strife? What envy? What fruit of the flesh do I have that I'm not walking in the authority of Jesus Christ? What lifestyle am I living? Bless you. That I'm not walking in the, the total uh, freedom ship of the blood, the total freedom ship of the authority of Jesus. What is it that I'm doing that I ain't got free from? What am I doing uh, that's placing a, a uh, uh, what is that? Forgive me. I'm not talking. I just want to say this because it's what flew through my mind. I'm not. I'm not doing a sermon about money. But Malachi says that when you don't give God what's his, that's the word, volunteer. I had to say it, but that's, I'm sorry, it's only that I said it. But you're voluntarily placing yourself under a curse. So why am I cursed? What are we doing that the Bible says we ain't supposed to do? What are we doing that the Bible says we are supposed to do? How can I improve daily? How can I pick my cross up daily? How can I die daily to follow after Jesus daily? Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, please don't think that I'm talking about money because people get so tight. And you won't believe the reports in private that I get. So-and-so says you talk about money too much. Well, you live in a, in a, you put yourself under that curse and put your family under a curse. Everything you took, go ahead and be in a curse. I'm, 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 I'm commissioned by God to, to set the, 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 the people that's bound up free. And that's one reason that we're bound up. We're voluntarily placing ourselves under a curse. It's biblical. It's not. It's Bible. You put yourself under your own sickness. You put yourself under your own uh, dark cloud. It just start, it's Bible. Yeah, amen. amen. Yeah. So what are we doing to not walk in the, the total? You, you know, I got a bunch of prayer warriors in my life that I go to privately. We pray and stuff. Do, do you know, oftentimes you wouldn't believe often the reports that I get from them. Uh, something happened in my life that you, so I had a, Repent, ask God what I do wrong, what happened, what, what area did I fall in, what area was I slothful in, what I do, God, where did I have a door open, God, to allow this stuff in? Was I not standing under the doorpost, the, the door frame, like, so to speak? What, am I, what did I do, God? Yeah. And I'm just talking about prayer warriors that, you know, that often pray, often fast. Uh, that, that's one thing that they, they often say is, what do I? What am I doing in my life that's not lining up with God's word? And we all, all of us, all of us. I, I'm closing. Don't get bored. Uh, all of us, we all can sit and think in our own mind. What is it that that we're? All of us, Cliff. We can all sit down in, in our own mind, knowing this is what I fall short in. Yeah. This is the area I can do better in. Yeah. This is the area. This is what I. This. The, we all. We all can do that. We all, Audrey, we all can sit down and say, you know what? I know this is what I do wrong. I need to do better here. Amen. Once we do better here, expect the blessings that come with it. Amen. Once we do better in this area, expect the freedom that comes with it. Once we pick up the slack in the belt in this area, expect the blessings from God to come in this area. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. So we can always improve. Yes. So we get salvation, the blood, improvement. Salvation, the blood, and then we can say, you know what, God, I want to walk in the liberty of your word. I want to give you something that was uh, that I got wrote on my board in there. Uh, 
listen to these words. Fasting and strategic intercession is going to be needed to pull in the supernatural help. Dive deep into the understanding because that's where you begin to build the burdens to build what heaven desires. I'm going to read that one more time slower. Now when you hear burdens, know that equals assignments. Fasting and strategic intercession is going to be needed to pull in supernatural help. Dive deep into understanding because that's where you will begin to build the burdens, to build what heaven desires for this house. Does that make sense? Yeah. What's strategic? Strategic. Like planned out. Like planned out warfare, planned out prayer, not just off the wall stuff. We, we've taught that. Like, uh, I'm not just coming to prayer meeting. I'm, I'm going to pray for, I'm praying for Sherry now. I'm going to pray for my cat now. I'm going to pray for Ray Cell now. I'm going to pray for uh, uh, Cliff's dog now. I'm just randomly praying. Strategic warfare, strategic praying, strategic battle plans is that I'm coming down. And you know what? I'm coming in for prayer meeting for the service. God, I'm praying for the service. I'm praying for the house. I'm praying for the message. I'm praying for the worship team. I'm praying for every single person that comes. They get set free. I'm praying, Father, that people get delivered. I'm praying, God, that people get set free, healed, on fire for you, God. I'm praying that gifts stirred up. So I'm strategically praying. I'm not just randomly praying. And that comes with maturity. I'm not just randomly uh, praying, but I'm, I'm literally pointing a target to one thing, like prayer points. And we're, we need to do that. We've talked about that. We ain't done it yet. Like prayer points within a house. That we can set prayer points in different areas of the house. You get to that section, you pray about that. Time to switch. You get over there, you pray about that. Time to switch. It's strategic warfare. Yeah. You never see a general in an army just go, Keith, and just blunt the guns are blazing like you do on Call of Duty. You never see that. <laughs> Even though we're so good at Call of Duty, but it don't happen that way. That's another story for another time. <laughs> it just doesn't happen that way. But you'll have the generals and, and the captains and the and the lieutenants, they'll sit down at the table. They'll have the mapped out. They'll have the, the, the area mapped out. And they'll have troop this go here, you go here. Aerial, whatever, the helicopters, you go here. Snipers, you go over here and set. You, you go, you do this, you do this. I got battle plans, strategic warfare on the enemy. I'm not just randomly praying. I'm not just randomly fasting. I'm not just fasting because I don't want it. No, I'm strategically going after something. I'm strategically going after this region. Amen. We're taking the territory back. How do I take the territory back? You can't take it unless you strategic warfare. It don't happen. You just want, I'm going to get it. I'm going to read one chapter today and I won't read for another week. That's not strategic. That's not strategizing. That's not planning. Me planning is, you know what, I'm going to read these five chapters every day no matter what it feels like, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like. I'm going to read three hours today no matter what, God, because i got a strategic plan for my life. I know you've called me to teach the Word, God, so I know i got to get in the Word at least three hours this day and study out the Word. It's strategic warfare. God, I know you've called me to intercede for this region. I've got to at least pray for five hours this day. It's strategic warfare. God, I'll pray for three hours in the spirit and just keep praying in tongues until something breaks. Then I'll begin to pray in English. And then if I, I'll go back to tongues. It's strategic warfare. Fasting and strategic intercession is going to be needed to pour in the supernatural help of this house. Dive deep into the understanding because that's where you begin to build burdens to build what heaven desires. That's where you begin to build the assignments. Burdens equals assignments. That's where you begin to build assignments to build what heaven has for this house, for this people. So when we begin to strategically intercede, strategically fast, strategically pray, that's why my spirit was so grieved at the beginning of service because I know this word of strategic warfare and I didn't see it and it hurt my spirit man not me my spirit man because I know what was spoken that we need to fast strategic intercession strategic warfare to pour in the supernatural help to divide into to dive into deep into the understanding that's where you begin to build the burdens and to build what heaven desires for this house 
We want to build the assignments from heaven. So from the fasting, from the praying, from the strategic warfare, that's when we literally build the assignments and we take it to heaven. And that's where heaven uh, reaches our spirit man and what our spirit has for, from heaven. It'll begin to build something. And then we'll begin to just strive for something new, some new revelation from God. That's where the assignments come from. So without the, the strategic warfare, we no longer have the new assignments from heaven. And when we don't have the assignments from heaven, we will never pour in the supernatural help that this region needs. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the region needs something. A couple of services ago, we said people's getting drawn off the streets. Why? Because the supernatural help was drawn them. Yeah. We tapped into something. Yeah. <laughs> Give me five more minutes. I'll, I'll be quiet. <laughs> but we tapped into something then. And when we, because we tapped into some type of prayer meeting, some type of prayer session, some type of, uh, uh, and I can tell you, I know exactly put my finger on it, but I don't want to because there was a prayer meeting that happened. And because of that prayer meeting, we poured in supernatural help. We tapped into heaven's assignment for the house, not realizing it. But because we dived into the strategic intercession, amen. amen, when we done that, we dived in and said, you know what, we're diving into this area that needs healing. Yeah. We dived into this, and in and, and unison, come together in this. That's why the Bible is so important, That how good and how pleasant. When the brethren uh, uh, comes together in unity, it's like the precious ointment, the precious oil, the oil, the Holy Spirit. The, the oil that comes to get the unison. That, that's why the, the number one, unity, unison. When we come together as one. And then we begin to birth a burden on the inside of us. Uh, literally, Kenny, a burden, uh, something. You birthed that burden, man of God. You. Kenny birthed that burden. I'm just saying, you can get mad at me and message me. It's okay. Kenny birthed the burden. He said, Pastor, I feel like we need to pray. Amen. Amen. And we prayed. And because of the burden, he birthed an assignment. Didn't know it. But there was an assignment that was birthed. And through that assignment in the spiritual realm, we tapped into heaven's glory. And from us tapping into heaven's glory, we poured down something. And for the next several services, people was getting drawn into the house. Salvation after salvation. Uh, uh, deliverance. Uh, healings. People coming off of the street. Every service. For the next two or three services. Y'all remember? Yeah. What happened? Come on. It's not just because the glory is on the house, which it is. The favor of God's on the house, which it is. It's not just because we have favor with God, which we do. It's more than that. Yeah, come on. When we take our spiritual authority, we've been talking about it all night. On this side, yeah. stop walking in the human nature and walk with the authority of, you know what? I'm coming into prayer meeting focused. Yeah. Strategic warfare focused. And I'm going to pray until something shifts in the heavenlies. Yeah. Till I get an assignment. Till my, my, my spirit man. Thank you, Father. Why do you think the scripture says that there's a groaning that happens in the spirit? Yeah. You pray till the groaning happens. Then the groaning takes over. You don't even know what you're praying. He'll pray for you. You groan. You don't know what you're praying. It's the burden on the inside of you. Literally, you don't know what you're saying when you're speaking in tongues. You're groaning out. Hannah groaned out, and she got an assignment from heaven. You don't know what you're saying, but some, there's a burden on the inside of you that's literally groaning out from heaven. And because of that, the assignment is birthed within your spirit. Then you have a new vision. Uh, where did the vision come from? The burden, the groaning, the new assignment. Oh, but we're, 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 we're so scattered within the body. The littlest things can, can cause division. So in this season, we have to be very, to bring the, the unity, strategic in bringing unison to the house. Because still yet, feelings is hurt. Still yet, people's emotions is high. Still yet, stuff will happen. And the littlest of things, Cliff, will bring disunison. And from the disunison, the, the assignment gets quenched. And from the assignment, the burden begins to leave. So from the strategic warfare, the strategic prayer meetings, the strategic uh, 
Just please just tell me this makes sense. Through all of this, we want supernatural help from heaven. We have to birth it. Through the birthing comes the groanings. Through the groanings comes the pain. Amen. It ain't easy giving birth. You mothers know. The Word of God says, though, they, though the, the, the mommy uh, carries the baby for nine months, then gives birth in pain. As soon as she has the baby, looks upon that thing, all of her pain, the thoughts of her pain, goes away. And the only thing that she knows is the blessing, beautiful baby that she has now. The, the groanings is tough. But once we get that burden to groan, yeah. once we get that burden again to, to shift this region, once we get that groaning burden once again as men and women of God, once we get that groaning, that, that burden on the inside of us, that I'll fast, I'll go into strategic intercession because that's what's needed, God. You said it. To have supernatural help. Amen. Amen. Let me say this. Why do you think we have so many churches? When you go to every single church, they have awesome messages from awesome men of God, but there's no supernatural something going on. Yeah, I can do this without the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now listen to me. I can get up here behind this microphone, open this Word of God, and read it without God's presence. Amen. Amen. And I can, with carnal thinking, I can muster up enough sounding good stuff to make somebody shout. Right. Amen. Amen. And I'm not going off on no church. Please hear me. Forgive me if you think that. I'm just saying we have 1,511 churches. You got all 1,511 of them. And they most of the time got good messages. And you're like, man, man that's a good message. Yeah. But there's no supernatural help behind it. Yeah. There's no supernatural growth behind it. There's no supernatural healing that takes place. There's no supernatural anointing that destroys the yoke from it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Some people can come and pray and, and somebody will shout. Good. Somebody will come and pray with the supernatural help. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So we want, we want the supernatural help. I want the supernatural help in my life. I want the supernatural help in this church. Yes. We want results here. Amen. Amen. We want results here. Do you know how good it felt them last M3 services back to back to back when people was coming off? The, I watched them walk down the street and they would make a beeline to that front door and come in because I can see everything goes on. And I'm like, my God, it felt so good because you might not know this, but it was prophesied to me. And Angel, when we went to one of our uh, pastor conferences that we go to, the guy that's the overseer, the one that... The, that's over the whole conference. He prayed for all the pastors, and he, he specifically come over to me and Angel, put hands on us, and he said, let me tell you what the Spirit of the Lord just showed me. I see we was at the little church, and I put a little bit of us of this in the group chat. Which, listen, which I'm about to leave that thing. So when you see me leave the group chat, don't think I'm leaving the church. That gives me stress that I do not need. Amen. 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 Anyways, don't think I'm leaving the church. I Anyways, uh, he said when we was in the little church, this is what the man of God said. He said, this is what I see. He said, I see God giving you a bigger building. Amen. Amen. So there should be enough faith building on the inside of you to listen to the rest of what I'm about to say. Amen. That's one of the gifts of the Spirit. Word of knowledge. Then a word of wisdom. He gave me a word of knowledge. And then he gave me a word of wisdom. Word of knowledge grasp your attention. Then the wisdom comes from God. The man of God come up to Cliff and say, you know why I seen three weeks ago this day your dog died nobody else knew that but Cliff automatically Cliff's mind goes and like okay I'm listening because nobody knew that but you God so then God will give him a fresh revelation that's how God sometimes works that's a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom my dog had surgery today guess he <laughs> <laughs> I've been on my dog a lot <laughs> anyways he, he said I see you uh, uh, with a bigger building he said I also see people coming he said but this is one thing I do see and people walking up and down the streets and the power of God, the supernatural anointing of God, drawing them into the house. And they can't explain it. They don't understand what's going on. But they just want to come, come and run to the altar and give the heart to God. And we've seen it for three days in a row. And it, it struck something on the inside of me. 
because that was a prophecy given to me two years, a year and a half ago. He didn't know nothing. And when I seen that, I said, my God, it's coming to pass. Then this reminded me, we want supernatural help. Just like the other night, we, we tapped into a supernatural prayer meeting. Amen. Amen. So we want it, we have to work for it. We want it, we have to work for it. We want it, we have to work for it. You cannot, and I'm closing now. You can stand to your feet if you want to. You cannot walk as a human and expect heaven results. I'll say it one more time. You cannot walk around as a mere human being and expect heavenly results. And expect for you to call down heaven at your command when you need it. Elijah called down fire from heaven, but the New Testament spoke of Elijah and said this, that you need to be a man like Elijah after a like passion like Elijah. You want the power of Elijah, you need to first have the passion of Elijah. Elijah wasn't a lazy man. Amen. Amen. Elijah was a man like passion after God's heart. A, a, a man that daily walked in the authority of God through the passion of serving God. So we want the, the heavenly results we can't no longer walk in the human side of it. Oh, we read the other day. We're, 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 we're not. Heaven is our city. We're citizens of heaven. We just read it the other day. So if we are citizens of heaven, which the Bible says we are, why can't we see heavenly results? If we are people after salvation, if we are people now drafted into the family, we walk through that door frame of blood. Now we are birthed again in the heavenlies. We are of heaven in this land. Ambassadors in this land. Right? So we're born again of heaven with heaven results, heaven authority, heaven, everything that heaven has to offer. Which bear twelve manner of truth and the leaves of that tree healing for you and me. Everything heaven has to offer. Everything that heaven has to offer, yes. we're heavenly people now. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Not citizens here no more. We're, we're pilgrims passing through. We're ambassadors here. Right? We're ambassadors. We are called as heavenly citizens to change this world. That's the only, listen to me, when you gave your heart to God, that's the only reason he did not suck you up out of this world right then and there. Amen. Amen. When you gave your heart to God, that's the only thing that kept you here. That's the only thing that, that's the only reason God you didn't say, you know what, God coming to my life, okay, boom. Let's go to heaven. It's his good and perfect, perfect will for us all to go to heaven and be with him. Amen. That's the reason Christ died. God gave his best that we, but now we are just ambassadors here. Presenting another region, presenting another another. Uh, uh, I don't say it just to say a heaven. We're here presenting a heaven, uh, presenting heaven. We're here on this earth presenting heaven. That's why we're left here. That's why we're left here. And anything short of that, after this night, you should be reminded, hey, I'm an ambassador. I can't act like it. Amen. 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 I am an ambassador. I can't talk like that. I'm an ambassador, Kenny. I can't let that filthy lucre come out of my mouth anymore. I, I'm an ambassador now. Heaven sent me to, 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 to fight for it. God sent me from heaven to this earth now as an ambassador to be a, 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 a representation, a represent, representative of Christ. That's why I'm here. So anything that I do in my day-to-day -day walk that's not that, that's short of that. Does that make sense? Yes.
salvation took too long for me because what am I what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And I I I when really I needed to let the Holy yeah. Spirit work. When I wanted this <coughs> gift of tongues, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? What am I when really I just needed the spirit to come down. Yeah. I've been asking myself the same but you just what you've been talking about. Why isn't this happening? Why am I seeing that? And again, like you said, I'm walk, walking in the flesh. I'm not looking on the spiritual side. So thank you. I needed that. Go give her a hand clap. Yeah. You know, and the reason, that's one of the biggest things for any Christian to, to, to humble herself down and say, you know what? I need to do better. I see where, where I'm faulting that. I, I see the areas that I, 